Here we go again. I'm back in the rabbit hole of Mesh Tastic. So it's funny how this mesh tastic thing's played out with me. Originally when it all started out and I got into it, I was just absolutely obsessed by it and I just couldn't put it down. Then all of a sudden, I just sort of hit burnout with it. And I know a few of you guys as well have felt the same. Mesh radio networks just draw you in. I mean, look at this, it's the state of this desk. But there have been quite a few developments lately in the Meshtastic world that I've been really excited about. So we've had some new products like this one here, this T1000E from um, Seed Studio. This is the Sense Cap. It's absolutely tiny. Um, and it's got GPS, motion sensor, light sensor. Everything's built in here, built in battery, built in speaker. And it's just like the smallest little device. I absolutely love this. So these are coming out soon. There's a link in the description to that. But also I want to talk to you about this. This is the GUI firmware for the T-Deck, the LilyGo T-Deck. T deck and I've sort of recently taken it for a bit of a test drive and kind of you know getting right into it using it as a daily driver for mesh tastic um, and trying to sort of ditch the smartphone now I think this is really impressive I mean you have to realize that this is super super development firmware so there's a, you know a lot of bugs in there but it's actually not as bad as I thought and it just sort of brings us closer to sort of actually having a standalone device that doesn't rely on the smartphone, which is kind of what I've been all about from the beginning, really. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't seen this, I'm going to do a quick run through here and show you um, what it's all about and how to obviously get this firmware onto your T-Deck. But, um, yeah, really, really cool. Um, if you're not used to sort of using, you know, this is not an out-of-the-box thing, basically. If you're not used to using sort of software with bugs or firmware with bugs, things like that, then this might not be for you. Um, um, but, you know, if you are a developer and you want to contribute to this and try and iron out some of those bugs, then yeah, get involved. So first thing I will say, I'll cover installing the firmware um, later. But the first thing you should know about this is there's no Bluetooth connection. So you don't use your phone um, connection over Bluetooth to configure the device like you would all the other um, nodes. It's possible to actually use a serial connection. Um, again, this is sort of, you know, stuff that probably more the more expert users will probably do um, but you can actually connect your phone to this with a an OTG lead well more like on the recent most recent phones you just use a USB hub and a simple USB C lead to connect um, to the device and you can actually configure it that way but there's actually not really any need to connect it to a phone um, initially because you can do most of the settings on the device most of the important settings on this device are actually included in the settings menu here so so you've got username, region, uh, preset, uh, channel, and the mode. And, you know, there's a few other things on there as well. Um, but that is basically, that's basically it. So really, you can get going with this on, on uh, you know, with basic settings. And you, you'll be able to use it. I did. I didn't actually connect it to the phone until later um, to configure GPS, which I'll also sort of come on to as well. But yeah, I've sort of learned quite a few things about this firmware. Um, basically... These buttons here, if you're using the kind of touch screen to navigate, which is the best way to do it, you have to kind of go slightly to the right hand side of these menus here to actually get um, get it to actually kind of respond. Now you kind of get the hang of this after a while, but at first you're kind of like fiddling around going, what you know, what the hell's going on? But yeah, starting off with the home screen. So you get this nice home screen here with um, telling you a breakdown of the messages. You've got 11 new messages, um, 19 of 106 nodes online, um, and my GPS position here as well. Um, and the time as well, which I think has got. Um, so that's that. You've got obviously the battery gauge at the top, which you know it does work but when you plug in the device to power um it will spring to 100 percent straight away so you can't really see the the charge level going up that is probably something to do with the hardware of, of the um of the of the lilygo t deck because it always it's always done that most of these devices on esp32 um yeah the, the voltage readings are a bit a bit kind of out sometimes if you go down to the next menu you've got your node list which is super cool and you can sort of see obviously all the nodes in the list um, and the beacon lists like you would on your smartphone which is absolutely brilliant I mean before on the T-Deck firmwares you never had anything like this and the node list is really important um, and it actually shows everything you need to know so even with time you know when the last um, when the last but sort of beacon was received um, you've even got GPS positions as well um, in there and your distances everything's everything's all good um, hops are shown as well it, you know it's fully featured it actually works really well 
the screen is a little bit kind of laggy like sometimes you know it's not not the best but that is probably more of an esp32 um an lv lg limitation it's never going to be great on on something with sort of you know such low horsepower but you know it works and it's doing this completely standalone without you know a smartphone at all so next up we've got the channels now first of all when i first kind of got this firmware loaded on here um, i was trying to work out how to initiate a long fast message now at the moment if we go down to the message section here we've got long fast messages these are all the local um, my local group all just chatting away on here seems to be working pretty well the most recent firmwares on this this is running 2.3 3.13 I think I'll have to double check that but basically that's one of the this is one of the later firmwares that actually where messaging is is improved quite a bit um, mainly due to priority um, you know message priority that sort of thing they've kind of shifted the message priority I believe um, to make it make it a little bit better and it does it does work better but you've still got to have it's quite strong RSSIs um, to enable messaging to work that's just a fact of life um, so yeah basically when you first put the turn of device on you won't see anything in here so if this device crashes and you're out and about and you just kind of you know this restarts um to initiate a long fast message what you've got to do is go into that section here where you see the channels and then just hit long fast once you hit long fast you'll get into the it'll actually create you a new message in long fast it took me a while to figure out how to do that and i was wondering why there was no sort of direct route into um you know long fast or creating a long fast message but there you go that's that's that um in here you can yeah the typing is brilliant you know it's pretty responsive um way more responsive than the than the previous firmware actually i think um and you've also got an on-screen cable which would be useful for porting this to other devices that don't have a built-in keyboard so that's pretty cool um, and then I think that's it for messaging yeah if you send messages out you'll get like um let's just do a little test message here if you send messages out you're going to get basically a little that was the uh, sense cap so that goes green to say that it's actually been acknowledged so that's like your kind of one tick on the uh, long fast if you're doing direct messages then it will go yellow for one tick and then it will go green for two like compared to the smartphone so green is always an indication that the message has actually kind of gone through um, and yeah that's I think that's about it for messages it just works because you haven't really got the added complexity of the phone I found that the messages actually you know sometimes you used to get messages or you still get messages that don't go through and you get a cloud with a line for it even though you know you have got a station that's you know within range and you can you know that it might be your own station um but i haven't seen that on this which is quite interesting but anyway next screen is the map it doesn't really do anything that's obviously something to come um you know later on it would be cool to see this kind of rigged up maybe if like map tiles could be stored on an sd card in there that would be pretty cool i know some other developers have done this with different um different mesh software um like ripple and um and some of the other ones but but yeah it'd be nice to see that come eventually so yeah the final one is obviously Obviously the settings which we've already looked at there is something else you can do with these menus you can sort of hold there and then you'll get basically a pop-up which again is a bit fiddly but you, when you get it to get it to show <laughs> my fingers are probably a bit a bit greasy for this but um yeah you see you see what i mean about it being a bit finicky but it, you know it's not um it's not the end of the world that's what you have to realize it's like development firmware so yeah basically you can get into this menu here and these really don't they don't really do anything this is obviously just sort of placeholders for for um you know stuff that's later that's going to come later but you can see there's all the settings there um and all that sort of stuff but you can't configure um gps or anything like that on the actual uh device and if you want to do that you're gonna to have to plug this into a computer using the serial um or plug it into the phone and use the meshtastic app to do that so to test this firmware out you need to go to this link here which i'll put down in the description this will bring you to the gui firmware you basically just scroll down here to um the firmware it says firmware t deck and it doesn't appear to be there so it looks like they've pulled that for some reason um maybe they don't want people trying this out which i think is a bit crazy but anyway anyway i'm sure this file is available somewhere else it seems a bit silly because if, if people want to develop it why would you remove it but anyway this file will be available somewhere else anyway so just um just keep an keep an eye out so just to check i went on the meshtastic flasher website and flashed um, the latest firmware as per their 
um, their flasher tool and it comes up with this one. So, the, you know, guys, I'm just telling it how it is. This has happened in real time. I've literally just checked this. The last time I checked it, the firmware was there. It's not there anymore. So, yeah, you're going to have to find another way to get that file um, and develop it. But I'm sure there's a way. Anyway, I just want to talk about the GPS quickly as well. So I've got GPS in here. It's not ideal because I'm using this really super slim case um, from... Um, uh, Alley Cat, that's the one. And basically the GPS is behind here and it's facing out this way. So if I want to get a fix, I have to leave it on the desk like that. I'm not too bothered about that because once I've got a fix, that's fine. The fix generally stays there um, and it, it kind of starts, when it restarts, you just put that on the table outside or just put it near the window ledge and it will get a fix again. Not bothered about that. Obviously there's some other really nice cases. This one's from Zero Fox. I haven't even had time to sort of test it out yet, um, but it's a, it's a nice case. And um, obviously it's a little bit thicker than the other ones. But yeah, this is available from Zero Fox 3D website. So inside my T deck here, um, apologies, this is my kind of development T deck. So I've got batteries paralleled in here, um, messing around with different ideas. But basically, um, this is the GPS unit. It's from Rush FPV. It's a GNSS um, GPS unit. It's very, very slim and it fits really nicely. Well, there basically. Um, they're really simple to hook up. You just basically wire RX to TX, TX to RX, um, and then your power leads. And it's it's very very simple to set up. There's loads of stuff online about how to add a GPS. So go check those sort of videos out. But yeah, it seems to work okay here. Obviously, this case is kind of you know the GNSS signals are very very weak. So that is why really you want to have this kind of you know kind of exposed. But you know it does work for my for my testing. It's absolutely fine. Like. All GPS is the initial fix might take a while. Um, you actually have to enable GPS on the MeshTastic app and you'll have to set up your GPIO pins because they're not set up as standard. So I'll just quick screen grab of that now. You also might notice in here that I'm using the little rack antenna. So the antenna that comes with the rack whiz block boards. I actually tested one of these the other day and it is so good in terms of a match. It's incredibly good on 869. Um, it's like an almost one-to-one -one SWR, which is which is brilliant. So I'm using that in here. Obviously, this is going to affect it a little bit being close to, you know, the, the plastic and everything else, but it, it does work. The other case that I've got here for the other T-Deck is going to have like an SMA antenna. So we're going to do it sort of properly that way. But this is, this is fine. This actually works quite well with an internal antenna i'm quite i've been quite surprised also notice i've got the speaker plugged in here as well um, and this firmware it actually gives you um, notifications and they're not actually horrendous <laughs> so i'll show you that so this is what happens when you get a message quite like that and then that notification stays on the screen there so you're never gonna never gonna not know you've got a message actually the having devices beep is actually really useful because most of the time my phone's on silent so when these beep I know I've got a mishtastic message. So just on the way out the door to check on one of my remote nodes um, I've actually missed a message on it and look there's no message history so this has crashed um, in the background and restarted so that is one of the the things with this it will it does crash from time to time just randomly. We still seem to have a GPS position and and the clock actually seems right now as well. So, <laughs> so there you go, it's all work in progress. Right, so I'm just up by the Hartford Hill node location. For those of you who don't know, Hartford Hill is now solar powered as well. Um, and it's been working pretty well over the last two days. Um, it's actually kind of held its voltage it's lost like what i don't know 10 millivolts or something like that so um and it's not sunny not completely bright today so that's probably probably why um i'll show you it quickly here it is in all its glory um it's a pretty simple setup it's just got a rack in there um i'm using the built-in rack solar input I know there's been some issues with the solar input on the racks. So basically like your solar panel is charging your battery inside um, the box. And then basically like your battery could go completely flat. Um, the node then turns off and then the solar charger obviously carries on charging the battery. Um, but the node doesn't restart. So it's kind of a bit counterintuitive really. But um, the idea is you have a big enough solar panel that that doesn't happen. We just have to see how this one goes. It's not the biggest panel in the world obviously. But... You know, we'll see how it goes. I'm all for using as less, you know, least gear as possible, um, especially when it's kind of out in the wild like this. Um, and also you want it, yeah, you want it to be small and covert and everything like that. You don't want this massive solar panel sitting there um, looking, looking all like 
yeah, still me. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a bit of a weird one, this one, because obviously I've, <laughs> you know, shown this T deck firmware and you probably can't get hold of it now, which is a weird, I don't know, it's a weird decision, but I, on one hand, I can kind of understand that they might not want people using this if it, if there were some issues with it. Um, but this is all, this is all kind of testing stuff. So, you know, there's always issues with everything. So I don't, I don't really understand why, why you'd pull that and especially pulling the source code as well where you know people can want might want to work on it might want to kind of enhance it and make it better um it just seems a bit it's, there's some weird weird decision making anyway but a ton of people have already downloaded this firmware anyway so you know it's going to be available somewhere um and um yeah we'll see see what happens with that anyway guys i'm gonna head back home and i'll catch you later <laughs> Thank you.